Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for stopping by the channel. So in this video, I wanted to review uh, one of the uh, more quirky watches that Omega put out. This is an Omega Dynamic. I believe this is a version 3. Uh, this also comes with a chronograph version, but I have the three-hander here. Reference number 5200.50. And it had a fairly short production run. I believe it, it heralded from the uh, mid-1990s to uh, early 2000. So of a span of about a few years, uh, they put out this watch, and I think it was inspired by some of the watches that they lent to the British forces back in World War II. It definitely has that aviation inspiration here uh, with the oversized crown and just a high contrast, high legibility dial. So let's quickly touch on the dimensions. Uh, this watch is very compact. It's a 36 and millimeter case diameter. Flipping to the side, lug to lug, you're looking at 42 millimeters, and it's very thin, coming in at 9.5 millimeters to uh, a flat sapphire crystal. And then the lug opening here for the uh, supplied three uh, link bracelet, it's 19 millimeters, tapering down to about 16 millimeters at the clasp. But more on the bracelet later. So let's discuss the, uh, the details on the dial. I do enjoy uh, the high stark contrast of this. You have a very nice matte black dial, and then you have uh, Berguet numerals all around the outside of a dial, printed very heavily in yellow. You can see at the very extremity of a dial, you have a railroad track uh, with uh, more yellow uh, plots there. And uh, it's just, it's very nice uh, and easy to tell the time at a quick glance. I enjoy the fact that you have these really well put together sword style minute in our hands. And then I really like the second hand here. You have uh, a very nice long second hand that reaches out and touches, or it looks like to touch the railroad track there. Then you have a counterpoint arrow there. The, uh, the date aperture, it's nicely integrated. And you can see that the uh, font is the same Bergray style font as uh, what's used for the uh, hour markers, which is really well done. You can see that uh, Omega is printed uh, close to the 12 o'clock there. And then closer to six, you have dynamic and automatic. Now speaking of uh, the automatic movement, this is an Omega caliber 1108, which is really uh, a base ETA 2892-A2, which has 21 joules, uh, 42 hour power reserve, and beats away at 28,800 vibrations per hour, or 4 hertz. So you do have a fairly smooth sweep on the second hand there. Uh, other features of this watch includes this really nice oversized crown. It is a screw down crown with the Omega branding logo. Um, so once you unscrew it, uh, you can manually wind the movement. Popping it out to the first position is your quick date set. And then it does have hacking, so you can adjust the time really quickly. And then rethreading it is very easy to do. I'm not 100% sure what this uh, gives for water resistance. I've seen on internet forums anywhere between 50 to 100 meters. So looking at the uh, case finishing, uh, this is pretty much done all uh, with a brushed finish, which I really appreciate for a tool type of aviation style watch. You can see that the sapphire crystal has a nice chamfer there. It's slightly raised, um, but it is flat. I'm not sure if there's any anti-reflective treatment on the, uh, the crystal or not, but given the high contrast on the dial, legibility is very good. Now speaking of legibility, this watch does have some decent loom to it, although you have to keep in mind this watch is over 20 years old and the loom will fade quite quickly. I'll throw up a low light shot here just so you can see how well and even the loom is applied. Um, it's applied to uh, all of the uh, Breguet numerals and uh, the plots on the railroad track as well as the hour and minute hand. So let's discuss the bracelet. Again, it's kind of an odd 19 millimeter um, lug size, so the end link to the case is 19 millimeters, which is more of a vintage cue here, but you can find, uh, you know, 19 millimeter leather silicone strap options. 
I do prefer this watch on a silicone strap. But this uh, bracelet is kind of unique to the dynamic line. It's three piece. Uh, you can see that um, what really fixes the uh, links in place is the center link. The uh, outer links here, you can just see the amount of flex that's given to them. While this can be comfortable, I will note that this thing pulls hair like crazy. I think you can actually see a few of my stray hairs here. And it's just because um, when uh, the outer links kind of flex, they can definitely pinch arm hair. And then if it moves on your wrist, it can pull your arm hair away. And now sizing it, they just appear to be uh, push pins. And then I do appreciate the different levels of micro adjustment on the clasp here. So you have up to six micro adjustment holes for the clasp. So fine tuning the adjustment is quite easy to do. So then you kind of have uh, this pressed out clasp component, which I don't really mind. It keeps the watch nice and thin. The clasp uh, does have Omega stamped in and it's nicely brushed. And then you can kind of see uh, that the uh, end links here, I don't know how solid they are, but you can also see that it's a very sterile case back. You just have an Omega medallion in the center, but you can see the case back is screwed into place, which probably aids in uh, you know the 50 to 100 meters of water resistance. And here's how the Omega Dynamic sits on my wrist which is 19 centimeters in circumference. So it's actually very comfortable and has a very low profile on wrist. I think this will suit a large number of wrist sizes because even though the uh, dimensions are quite small, I just think that with the uh, high legibility on the dial and the overall design of this watch, you can definitely pull it off if you have a bigger wrist like I do. So just before I wrap up, I just want to discuss uh, with you, you know, are there any negative aspects to this timepiece? Well, for me, I, I think the biggest negative is the design of the bracelet. Uh, I appreciate that they're thinking outside the box here, but it pulls your arm hair like crazy. At least for my specific example, it does. Please let me know in the comments below if you've had the same issue. And uh, the only other thing I will nitpick is I, I do wish... Uh, I was more confident in the water resistance rating for this watch, but like with any vintage watch, I think you just have to pay a little bit of closer attention with how you handle it and what environments you have it in. But other than that, guys, I think this is a really unique and fun watch from Omega. As far as alternatives go, um, I'll just hold up uh, my and compare it to my Zin 556A. Uh, the Zin's slightly uh, bigger, it's about a 38.5 millimeter case. But I do think you can definitely see the, uh, the pilot-inspired nature of both timepieces. And price-wise, too, I think you can get these for around the same price. Uh, the Zin, you know, they trend around $1,300 US dollars on bracelet. And you can typically find uh, these Omegas on the used market for around that same price as well, depending on condition. So guys, that about wraps up this video. Please let me know what you guys think about this watch in the comments below. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next video.